To close this program and share with us his thoughts on today's market, please welcome Marvin Fausto, the call resident portfolio management expert and veteran fund manager. Please come on stage. Wow. Okay, that's good. You have the star cast. Galeng. Are you all learning? Good. Thank you very much for coming here. Um, my job is really to put things together, at least uh, make sense of what we learned today. And I'd like to thank Mr. Mark Matthews for presenting a very interesting topic on the global scenario. And I didn't realize that uh, China is really growing very fast now and might one day be the biggest uh, economy in the world. And uh, I think my key takeaway of what he talked about is really the world is growing. And I think the environment that we have globally is good. I think that's the key takeaway of what he said. There are certain uncertainties, there are challenges that we're going to face globally. Maybe interest rates are going to go up. There's going to be a movement of low interest rates now going higher, creating some volatilities in the market. But in general, the world is OK. And then uh, Mike Ferrer talked about the industry. Industry is growing. There are certain reforms that, that we're experiencing in the mutual fund industry. And you have that opportunity to build your wealth through mutual funds. And then uh, now we have the experts, the fund managers. And COL Fund Source uh, put effort putting them both together. We have that in the platform. You have the access. You can do that by the click of a finger to access these fund managers. And you can have one portfolio, put everything together at the click of a finger. It's more convenient to manage your portfolio that way. But I guess the topic that we have for today is really how to manage your portfolio in today's market. And uh, with the volatilities that we are expecting, um, let me just give a little bit of reminders so when you go through this process. They have talked about a lot of the process, the balancing, etc. But um, the common way of building a portfolio on any ordinary person is they select for this investment. The investment selection is the first thing that they do. They think about what stocks to buy, what's interesting, what is, uh, what is uh, attractive, and then they also sell the ones that they're not. And then the process of going through that, buying stocks that you like, choosing the ones that you like, and effectively building your portfolio just as a consequence. So you have different stocks like buying 10% of this, 10% of that, then effectively you create a portfolio. Now, there's not completely wrong, that's not a completely wrong uh, strategy. But uh, I guess the difficulty of that, the difficulty of that process is that you have a, uh, you enter into an emotional journey. It's uh, when the market goes up, you get affected, you're happy. When the market goes down, you're affected as well. Like just this morning, you were, you were bullish about the global economy, and then the fund managers are talking about the unknowns, they're talking about, talk about the uncertainties, and then you feel bad again, and then towards the end, <laughs> you just build the portfolio. We, went, we go through that process. We go through that emotional process when you are concentrating on the investments. But what I'd like to leave you with is that the more important decision to make is really the asset allocation. The more important decision to make is the amount of investment that you put in the asset. For example, last year, SM went up, the stock no? went up by 50% last year. If you invested 100% there, you would have made 50%. Diba? So it's the amount. But if you only invested 10% of your portfolio in SM, you would only have made an effective 5% in that investment, right? So it is really the amount of money you put in that affects the return, which sometimes we do not realize in doing because we are attracted every day with the news and everything that we see. So we are now affected by that process. And I'm saying is that you start first with the asset allocation. And, uh, 
And, and look at it like a building your portfolio or building a house. An example of that is uh, when you build a house, you don't buy the furniture first. You don't buy the refrigerator, the bed first. You talk to an architect, design your portfolio, design your house, depending on your budget, depending on the cash flow, depending on your taste, depending on your appetite. In investment, you call that risk appetite. So first, you look at your, yourself, and then uh, decide what kind of portfolio you like. And then later on, that is a time when you decide what to put in. Um, I've been managing funds for many years, about 30 years, and I'm also affected by that. Uh, I see the market every day. I watch the market every day. And I was managing clients' portfolio. And it's even harder if you're managing your own money, your hard-earned money. It's even more emotional that way. You get affected by that. My suggestion is, uh, you know what's happening in the world now. You know what's happening in the Philippines. Uh, my suggestion is, like, go to a quiet place. Uh, maybe sit down and, and uh, maybe not, not watch the news or not watch ANC first <laughs> and be affected by that. And then... In a quiet place, no news, no information, decide on what you like. Decide on your goals and think about your future. Think about your cash flow. Then build your portfolio according to what kind of, how much invested in equities, how much in fixed income. And then after that, that is the time you decide how much, what, what stock to buy, what bonds to buy. Something like this, our model units. We call that model units. Um, when most of you are investing in mutual funds, and I'd like to congratulate you for doing that. Uh, we invited the mutual fund investors in COL now. And we're just very happy because, you know, statistics show last year, uh, most of you were investing regularly. You, most of you were investing on a regular basis. And that is very good. That is how you build wealth. And uh, when you buy mutual funds through COL, you are being asked, the first time you buy is you're being asked a question or some questions, about seven questions, to determine what kind of risk appetite you have. That is also a regulatory requirement, but it tells you what kind of personality you have as far as investing is concerned. And we divided that into four categories. Uh, conservative, moderately conservative, moderately aggressive and aggressive, depending on the risk. And then we, and I have here a model, model unit, a model portfolio. The most conservative, I put 20% still in stocks. Because if you just invest in bonds, you're not going to make more than inflation. In fact, the next slide will show that uh, if you invest in, uh, in just a conservative portfolio, you will only get about 4.4% for the past uh, five years. 4.4% is not bad. It's above inflation. But the volatility, the volatility is much less. Uh, it's about a high of 15% and a negative three. And most of the time, you will make money. If you had this kind of portfolio, a conservative portfolio, 93% of the time would have made money. And only 7% with a yield of about 4.4, a continuing uh, yield for the past five years. And that's OK. You can double your money in about 16 years. Now, the next portfolio is, uh, is a moderately conservative portfolio, like 40% equities, 60% fixed income. And your yield is about 5.8%, with a wider range of return, a high of 23% and a low of 7%, negative. But most of the time, again, most of the time, you will make money, 84% of the time. At 5.8%, you can double your money, it's about 12 years. Then the next portfolio is uh, moderately aggressive, a moderately aggressive, about 60-40, 60% equity, 40% fixed income. That's, I like this portfolio. In fact, this is our, this is our portfolio, my wife and I, this is our, we like 60% equities because that really, that really fits our goals, that fits our, 
our personality and our risk appetite. And the range, and the range of returns, about 37% a high and a negative 10 for the past five years. And most of the time, about 79%, you would have made money. And 21% uh, with the negative. So as you go along the risk, the ne and the last one is uh, aggressive portfolio. As, as you go along the risk uh, bar, the, wide, the range goes fatter, I mean bigger, with a high of 40% and a negative 14.8%. But still, about 76% of the time, you will make money. At 8.3%, uh, you could double your money about nine years. So that's, uh, if you look at the long term, it doesn't really matter what the short-term gyration gives you, which is what we are experiencing right now. The first two months of the year, or first three months of the year, was really very volatile. And um, what, what, what I'm trying to espouse is, after, after taking the test, in the COL fund source, you will check, you can check your profile, what kind of investor you are, and you can design your house, design your portfolio, depending on that, and then that's the time that you can choose. Okay. What's next? Last year, if your portfolio was something like this, then, uh, oh, yeah, portfolio something like this, this would have been your return. It's a very good year last year. Diba? A low of 7.4 and a high of 20%. Next. Now, so you build your portfolio according to your asset allocation, and then the next step is the security selection. And review that, review that uh, regularly. My wife and I, uh, when we, we talk about that uh, uh, every anniversary, uh, we talk about our asset allocation, and we decide what kind of allocation are we going to implement for this year. And even my sons, they're here. They also, when we, when, we, when we have vacations, usually at the end of the year, we talk about the asset allocation. Even my children, two of them are already working. And most of their portfolio is already in equities because they really don't need the liquidity right now. But that's the kind of allocation that, that they would like to do. And I suggest for, for families like yourselves, Maybe go to a place that you haven't been before on a vacation. Usually we do it on December 31. We, we apportion about half the day to talk about our strategy, talk about what happened during the year, what, hap what, what we plan to do next year. And it's a good exercise. It's a good uh, planning session or with fun in, 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 a, in a place, uh, in a vacation place. And uh, talk about this. Talk about this and decide what you want to do. And don't bother much about the market because the market is just going to go up and down the way it will because that's how it works. It's just that we are all affected. So instead of talking about, instead of focusing your attention on the security first and foremost, I suggest concentrate on the allocation. And then if you're within the allocation, Regardless of where the market is, regardless if it goes up and down, you are okay. The house that you're going to build is, is a house with a mix of bonds and equities that you are comfortable with. A portfolio that will keep you safe. A portfolio that will keep you safe against the harsh environment outside. And a portfolio that you will make you sleep at well at night. I think that's the that's the real message I'd like to put across. And uh, this time, there are just a few words about what's happening. The, the biggest problem that we have, the biggest concern is really the foreign exchange. It's the worst foreign exchange in the region. We're down about 4%. And our stock market is down about the worst also among the region. However, people don't forget. They forget that we are the, one of the fastest growing economies in the region as well, about 6.7%. And our banks are funding that. 
our bank's growth in loans, about 19%. Even the government, government debt is very low at 41% to GDP. They have a lot more room to fund this infrastructure program. There might be delays in infrastructure, but we are hitting an all-time high in infrastructure. Last year, 569 billion. This year, 50% higher. And you cannot argue against that. You cannot argue with the facts. Even if our exchange rate is down, the exchange rate is down because we were importing a lot. We are buying more outside. We're bringing in equipment. We're bringing needs to fund this growth. And the central bank, I think, is doing the right thing. If, if personally, I think they're doing the right thing because there is really no reason to choke, to choke the economy. If you increase interest rates, you will tighten liquidity and maybe choke the economy. So let the economy grow first with a benign interest rate. And then by the time we're overheating or even before that time, that's the time you move. We have sound fundamentals, so this is what I suggest. So after your asset allocation, the equity portion, you can choose your index funds. We have four index funds in the COL fund source, the Film Life Index Fund, Sun Life Index Fund, Phil Equity Index Fund, and then the, the Philippine Stock Index Fund. I suggest about 50% of your portfolio because that's the one, really, your core position. And I espouse um, active management, about 50%. Because in active management, it is less volatile than the index because they have cash in their portfolio. And the fund managers here, you heard earlier, are the ones managing this actively. And then balance it off with a, with a bond fund that can uh, reduce the risk, reduce the volatility, depending on your uh, risk appetite, depending on your profile. So the proportion really depends on your budget, on your risk appetite. So I think that's the, for one last thing that I'd like to leave with you. In your uh, implementation of this portfolio, please remember that time in the market versus timing the market, it is more important to just keep invested. On the right side, you will see that if you just invested for the past, kept it there for the past 10 years, your earnings would about 8.9%. If you just miss the best five days, you take a vacation, your yield would only be about 5.89. If you miss the 10 best days, 3.57% la lang. <laughs> and then if you miss the 30 days, the 30 best days, you're probably losing money. I mean, it's very hard to predict what's going to happen. If you're not in the market every day, it's very hard to, even if you are in the market every day, it's very hard to predict what's going to happen. What this data will tell us for the past 10 years is that you're better off just buying and holding. And then build a portfolio that is good for you, build a portfolio that is uh, beneficial for you and your family, and to build a, a wealth that can help you grow your, your business, even, even your, your future. The life as it is now is really very complicated. And uh, we have a lot of information that, that we get every day. And it's very hard to focus on a lot of things at the same time. And what, the reason why we're asking you to come once in a while in, in the sessions like this is to take a look back and uh, understand that there are a lot of things more important and then just put aside some of these funds and let it work. Invest part of your earnings in, in mutual funds or in stocks and in bonds and then concentrate on what you do. Concentrate on your job, concentrate on your business. And I guess, I think over the long term, you will be able to build wealth and you'll be successful in your investment. That's it, and thank you very much.
Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Fausto. Again, thank you all for spending your morning with us. Uh, please feel free to visit the booths outside. Uh, please feel free to uh, play their games, play their short promos. And again, uh, as our speakers have mentioned, please stay invested and have a great weekend ahead. Thank you. Thank you.